everyone, I'm Julie Lavoie. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the experience of going to hacker school in New York City or how I spent my summer vacation 2013. I'm going to speak in English. Uh, you're welcome to ask me questions in French. It's just my French is not that good. Um, and also, I just want to say as well, I, I'm not a, I don't get any kickbacks from anyone going to hacker school. I don't represent hacker school. So if there's any mistakes, it's not their fault. Um, so what's hacker school? Uh, hacker school is um, basically three months uh, program in New York. It's full time. It's free. Obviously, uh, living in New York is not free. You might have heard. Um, <laughs> hacker school describes itself as a writing retreat for programmers. The basic idea is not that there, there's not a curriculum. It's not like people tell you what to work on. It's not like a CS degree or a short term program. You really decide to yourself, what do I care about learning as a programmer? How do I want to improve? And you go there, and there's people there to help you um, develop in the way that you care about. So it's like a very self-directed program. Um, for myself and for other people that uh, went through academia, it's sort of how you wished your CS degree but wasn't. Uh, what hacker school is not, it's not Y Combinator. Um, they make a really big deal of saying this. It's not a place to um, develop a product or a company or like about startups. It's really specifically for, I want to become a better programmer and this is who hacker school is for. Uh, so if you can work on anything you want, what do people work on? Uh, for myself, I already had a background in systems and like uh, CS theory and math and stuff like that. So what I really wanted was I wanted to really understand the web stack. I'd done a bit of work in Rails before, which is kind of a really plug and chug kind of machine. I felt like I was doing a lot of things that I kind of sort of understood but not really. So I really wanted to get closer to what's really going on. So for myself, I mostly did projects with stuff like Flask, Node, like things that are a little bit more... Uh, you have to do you know, a little bit more yak shaving, a little bit more, you have to do your own thing. Um, in my group, um, what other people worked on, they were uh, reading groups in theoretical CS. There were people that took a SIPSER, like a famous textbook in theoretical computer science, and basically just went through each chapter week by week together. Um, there were people that like chose an intro to programming MIT course and just like went through it together every week. Um, there were talks by like amazing programmers like Jessica McKellar, which you'll probably see at PyCon, uh, Mel Chua, Peter Norvig from Google Research. Um, some people wrote their own programming language. Some people wrote uh, JavaScript games. Uh, there were workshops on how to contribute to open source if you've never been an open source contributor. Like pretty much anything you could be interested in about how to improve as a programmer, there was someone doing it there. And then if there wasn't, if it wasn't there already, you could say, well, I'm starting a group about this. Does anyone want to come? Um, what makes Hacker School special? So there's a lot of programs right now, like Rails Bootcamp, the Flatiron School, like these kind of three month, like 12 week programs of some sort of like take non-developers, turn them into developers or kind of things like that. Um, you know, what's so special about hacker school? For myself, I, I would choose hacker school in a heartbeat over any other of those programs. Um, particularly to me, what made the difference was the people and like how much effort they put into creating like a positive social climate. Like it wasn't just a place where it's like, oh yeah, you're just gonna learn some Rails now and then you can get out here and get a job doing Rails. But really like, they've, to me, they felt like they really made an effort to address like what's kind of wrong with like our weird programming culture and how to make that better. And I'll talk a little bit more about it in a sec. Um, but also in the sense of that there's no, like it's not like here's a 12 week program on how to learn Django. It's really like you decide what you work on. There's no teachers, like there's facilitators that are like more experienced programmers that are there to like help you when you have questions or is this how I should be learning? Like uh, one of them actually is uh, Alison Capture, who's very active in the Python community. She's gonna be talking at PyCon. She's a hacker school facilitator, for example. And then mentors are like really experienced programmers, I guess like often famous programmers that will come and like work with you. Like basically you, for a whole week, there was Peter Norvig sitting there and you could be like, hey, do you wanna code with me today? Peter Norvig, head of Google research. He'd be like, sure. So I mean, that, to me, like that, you know, that doesn't happen to me. I don't know about you, but that doesn't happen to me every day, right? Um, so I thought that was really amazing about hacker school. Um, and so, part of one of the things that was amazing about one of the things that was amazing about hacker school and was part of was part of creating the social climate. Um, hacker school has very specific social rules. And these situations will be very familiar to you if you've been in tech for more than like five seconds. <laughs> and so there's actually four, but I'm only gonna talk about three. And so the most important, so num rule number one was no fanging surprise. For example, you could say to me, Julie, you're a programmer. Don't you know that indices are supposed to start at zero when you have a tech talk? I knew that in my mother's womb. 
Like, if you've ever read Stack Overflow or Hacker News, you're probably familiar with this kind of argument. And Hacker School is like, you know, let's stop with those comments. Like, it's never the point to help the other person when you say something like that. Really, you're just trying to like make the other person appear ignorant and make yourself like kind of one up them and make yourself seem better. And it's like that doesn't create a positive climate. And it's like it just makes people feel bad. And there's no gain in the conversation. And then number two is no well actually is. So for example, someone could say, well, actually, Julie, actually, no, I said I was going to use my friend Louis as an example of things that are like, well, actually, he's, and I, he's my friend, so I asked him before if I could pick on him. But his, his question before of like, well, actually, aren't you missing a parenthesis there? That's exactly this kind of question where, like, it's true. He's not saying something that's wrong, but does it really add to the discussion? Like, is that the main point of what we're talking about? It's like, not really, right? Thanks, Louis. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I, I, I'm, I, I'm sure he didn't mean it in a bad way, and people rarely do. Like, I say stuff like this as well, but if you get like 10, 15 people like that in a discussion, it's just like you can't even talk about the main thing anymore. You're just basically always talking about these little nitpicky things that don't really matter. And it kind of really ends up detracting from having a real conversation. And so that, that was another rule of hacker school. And the other one, like a very important one, is no sort of sexism, elitism, racism, and just to generally foster like a climate of respect among students. And people honestly like these things so much that they, they said, like, you know what? With my roommates, we decided to like implement this. We decided with my roommates we would have no well actuallys, or we would we, <laughs> we would have no um, Oh, didn't you know? No finging surprise. And like, so people found it so positive that even outside of the context of, oh, you're in hacker school and you have to do this, people voluntarily thought that this was like adding to, the, adding to their social life. Um, and so to continue with the idea of the climate of respect, I find what like with tech lately, there's a lot of discussion like on Twitter and on the internet about why is tech so toxic? Like this whole like controversy lately around the code of conduct and what's happening at conferences and things like that. And I think... You know, people are starting to, to realize this. And for example, the Python community, I think there's a lot of effort that goes on to like make the Python community a positive place where like a lot of people feel like they can belong. Um, and one thing that I really realized from going to hacker school where there was so much effort put into like having a positive social environment was the toxic climate in tech is holding us back and not just as like human beings, but also as programmers. Because if you feel like people are gonna ridicule you all the time for asking a question, you're not gonna ask your question and you're gonna probably stay ignorant. Or you might go Google it by yourself, but it's gonna take you a longer time to like actually learn things than if you can say, hey Matsu, I don't know how this works. Can you tell to me about it? Or like, I've always wanted to write a JavaScript game. Can you help me? Or I don't really understand how closures work. And people's like, oh I know, do you want me to tell you? And like when people can like really learn and interchange from each other as opposed to being mean and tearing each other down, you learn so much faster and you become so much of a better programmer than you would otherwise be. And so study after study has shown that people actually learn best when surrounded by like trust and respect and like a climate where that's friendly. And so I wanted to put a picture of my friend Alex, but I ran out of time. But my friend Alex from hacker school, he's essentially the archetypal computer science golden child. He's like, he went from like a top school to Microsoft research. He's doing data learning and like data science, I'm sorry, machine learning and data science. And he told me, so he's like, you know, whereas I know that I do not look like the typical programmer. He looks like the typical programmer. He is the archetype of a programmer. And he told me is that I feel very comfortable when people ask me questions to, to help them and like to answer their questions. And I, I like helping people. But when I have questions, I, I, I actually don't want to ask them. I feel uncomfortable. And I'm like, wow, that's interesting. Because for me, I thought, look, this guy is so smart. He's like a kind of whiz, you know, he's 17 or something. And you know, he, he, you know, he seems really smart. But he says, exactly, because people think of, I know a lot, so I don't want to, when I don't know something, I, I don't want to see, because I feel like people might laugh at me. They might look down on me. And so I thought, wow, if, if this guy who, you know, is the archetype of who belongs as a programmer feels uncomfortable asking questions, like how many of us also feel uncomfortable without seeing it, right? And so without this, this kind of nasty, like super mean, like stack overflow kind of hacker news environment, I think people are more free and curious to explore. And so what I found at hacker school was you had people that were, say, really experienced web developers that were like, hey, I want to learn theoretical computer science because I don't have an academic background. Or, hey, I'm an IT consultant and I charge like $150 an hour to big companies. I'm going to write a JavaScript game for the browser. Like People felt really free to like do something new that they hadn't tried before just for fun, just for something that makes them 
feel passionate and interested in technology. And that was like super cool to me. And then, okay, I have four minutes. Okay, I better hurry. <laughs> so um, number two that I thought was great was Hacker School makes a huge effort to have gender parity. Um, it's not 50% yet, but it's like, on average, it's like 35 to 45% women, which is a lot more than like pretty much any other environment. And that's just students, and they have a lot of women like facilitators and a lot of women mentors. And what I found was really special, of course for me as a woman is great because I didn't feel like, oh, I'm like the only girl in the room and everyone's staring at me and freaking me out. But it was great for guys as well. And before you say, oh, it's great because I can go on, like there's lots of chicks I can hit on and we can go on dates and talk about Python, it's gonna be so cool. It's not even for that reason. <laughs> no, but it's true. It's not even for that reason. It's just because I think it's really easy if you only ever meet like one girl programmer in your company or in your class. It's really easy to feel, even if you're someone who's really nice and has the best of intentions, to feel like, I don't really know how to deal with this person. They're different from me. I haven't met someone like them before. What if I say the wrong thing? What if I like insult them without realizing? Like People just become awkward just because it's not a situation they're in very often. Even you know, even if that person is not like a totally nasty person, is really like a person, a nice person with the best of intentions. But when like every day you have like 30 to 40 female programmers working side by side with you that are helping you, that you're helping them, that are teachers, that are mentors, you just kind of get over that stuff and you can move past that into like actually becoming peers and friends and not having that weird tension between like between people where they just don't know how to act with each other. And so a good example is. Partway through hacker school, um, a few of us went to a lockpicking meetup that was in New York City that was not part of hacker school, that was just a general event. And there was maybe five of us, um, I think four women and one guy from hacker school. And then the rest of the group was essentially 80 white guys and like one girl looking really uncomfortable, trying hard to like, you know, she was wearing a polo shirt and like trying really hard to, you know, not look too much like a, like, like a girl. And I was like, I, I've been that girl, that's such a terrible position to be in. And it was just really night and day between how we um, dealt with each other and how comfortable we were like making jokes and hanging out and helping each other and giving each other tips. And then the giant sausage fest, which was like the whole rest of that event, where it's just like all of these kind of guys and you know that one girl uncomfortable. And I was like, wow, if people could really see how, how great it can be that environment, I, I really feel like th there would be Maybe it's idealistic, but I feel like a lot of people would lose their objections to having a more gender balanced environment in technology. And essentially, not just, for, not just for women, but just for guys as well. And a lot of my guy friends at Hacker School said exactly that, that it, it wasn't just good for, like, good for us, but it was good for them. So on the first day, they told us, pretend that your goal was to become the best possible programmer during the next three months. How would you approach things? And it sounds stupid, because obviously you're like, well, that's why I'm here, right? But to actually keep that in mind, I found that instead of like typing the same stupid thing like 10 times, I would actually bother to like write a snippet to like not have to repeat myself. I would actually bother to like refactor that method instead of like copying and pasting that stupid code like 10 times. Or I would bother to like read the doc to find out to do things. It really changed like how I approach things as a programmer. Like I put a lot more effort into it. Um, the other thing was by Mel Chua, who gave an amazing talk about um, how, how do people learn best um, in, in engineering communities. And she said in particular, it's very important, like if you want to learn something that's important to you, to find a community of people that care about the same thing, particularly if you're someone who's a little bit an outsider or not like the, the stereotype of whatever it is in that field, but just to, f to find people because it's so much more fun to learn with others and it, it keeps you engaged, it keeps you interested, you kind of interact with others, whereas by yourself it's just boring. Like, and then pair programming. I hated pair programming before hacker school. I had to pair program for a job where the dude smelled really bad and I really didn't like him. And I was just like totally off. The interview for hacker school is mostly pair, pair, pair programming and I almost did not apply because I hated pair programming so much. Um, but there I really found that it was amazing because of this climate of respect. Um, it, it changed everything because you, you program with a buddy and it's like you really get to see like programming is such an internal process, right? It's such a mental thing. And so it's very interesting to see how does someone else approach that? Like how do they think of the same task? How do they design something? How do they use their editor? How do they use their tools? And it's like basically pretty much everyone from hacker school will say like that was the most valuable part of hacker school was pair programming. And I, I at the end, I would definitely agree. Um, so yeah, I mean, essentially uh, I, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.